Reverend Leviathan here at Holiday Hangover in Newport, Kentucky. Here with one of my favorite artists, the Hitchcock of hip hop, Prozac. What up, y'all? Prozac, thank you very much for being the Dark Scott, man. Uh, well, I first heard you on Haskin Factory on Gray and Blue. That was my introduction to you. Okay. So as soon as I heard that, I went back and checked stuff out. And of course, I came upon Project Dead Man. Yeah. Fell in love with it right away. And I know a lot of fans have probably been asking, you know, is PDM still a thing? You all plan on doing something else? It's definitely still a thing. I mean, we, I know I've said this a lot, you know, in the past, but me and Mike Clark, we still talk all the time. I feel like every six months we have like this drunken or almost like a drunken phone call what's up man what are you doing we got to do it we're gonna do it we're gonna do an ep we're gonna do a record we're gonna release a single we're gonna and then like he gets pulled this way and i get pulled that way he's always touring with kid rock or whatever and i'm doing my films and I, you know what i mean but yeah i do think it's going to come back and i think actually very soon in fact we're doing a project dead man performance at the astronomicon too um you know twisted's convention of course so we're going to do a performance and i think that's going to lead into a lot more definitely something i'm wanting to catch so yeah after project dead man i decided to check out your solo stuff so i got black ink right after black ink i bought every cd that strange music had and I, uh, I noticed that Black Ink, Paranormal, and We All Fall Down, all the covers are very similar. Is, is that like a trilogy of albums? To me it is, yeah. I think, the, and I'm glad you picked up on that, man. Those three albums, in my opinion, are all like, uh, they're graduations of each other, you know what I'm saying? And I, in, in the next album that I'm working on, uh, The Strange Music, is going to be pretty much the climax of, of that trilogy now being, you know, more than a trilogy. Yeah. And I know that a lot of artists, you know, they have that one album that they've done that's just like really dear to their heart, you know, which right. of your albums, is there one that just has a really special place in your heart? You know, of course, I want to say all of them do to some degree, um, but I feel like, I don't know, man, I feel like Paranormal really does, but at the same time, I feel like um, We All Fall Down really does too. You know, probably more personal. Uh, Paranormal is probably my favorite record I've done. Um, and that's not just because of the songs on it. There's a lot that goes into making a record. Yeah. And I feel like there was uh, a lot of incredible synergy and serendipitous moments in making that record. You know? oh, I definitely pick up on that. So, uh, I noticed that on all the albums that I've had of yours, you like to flirt quite a bit with rock music. Like, yeah, um, absolutely. Are there any aspirations to do any kind of rock project? You know, I'd love to do it, man, but, I mean, with all the stuff that I'm doing, it's, it's hard. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, if I had, like, well, I don't want to say if I had it to do over, I would have, you know, done a band, but I really, uh, I think live music is something that can't be uh, replaced, you know what I'm saying? And I think there's just something that's primal about, you know, drums and guitar and a live set and whatever, so I'm a metalhead by nature. Oh, yeah. you know, I'm not a I'm not a big hip hop fan at all actually. Um, but I'm a, definitely a metal fan. Yeah, well, that's one of the things I love about you is you know your versatility on your albums. You know, it's one of the things that really hit me when I heard "We All Fall Down." Yeah. And uh, like, to me, "We All Fall Down" was was a niche record to reach my most diehard fans. You know, it wasn't meant to uh, please the masses, so to speak, of the of the genre, but it was directed to the most diehard fans of mine. Well, I will say that album did not reach a diehard fan, but that's the album that made me a diehard fan. That's what's up. So, and, uh, well, for those of you who aren't into hip-hop, this dude also does a paranormal research thing. It's a haunted series. On, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Um, it's uh, Haunted Saginaw. If you search Haunted Saginaw or, or Prozac, obviously, on Amazon Prime, the entire series is on there. Every year I release a full-length uh, paranormal investigation documentary uh, chronicling a case, a location. And, you know, we're not there for one day, two days, three days. In fact, the, the newest film, A Haunting on Finn Road, we were there for six months straight to produce one documentary. You know, so it's obviously paranormal investigation, paranormal research. Now, are you able to share with us maybe, like, I've seen Haunting on Finn Road, and that was messed up. And so, like, would you be able to share with us maybe one of your most frightening experiences that you've had in doing one of these investigations? Well, just yeah. anywhere. Well, you know, as far as, like, the new film, Finn Road, to me, 
I, I want to I want to say it's the scariest location, and a lot of people that you know follow what I do would be surprised because there wasn't the you know amount of evidence, so to speak, that we had in other films. But there was an, like an oppression there, you know, that happened to everybody involved with making the film. It uh, was able to manipulate. It was able to. Uh, like a press, you know, literally. I mean, we would have lost time while we were filming. Um, everybody would be, you know, mood swings, uh, super angry. Um, that's just something I've never seen. You know, actual oppression, you know, uh, textbook oppression. And I never actually encountered that. So to me, that was insane. Yeah, well, I noticed too. I think I watched that. And uh, didn't you, like, you lost a few crew members, right? They couldn't take it anymore. Well, we went. lost a ton of crew members. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, people don't even know the half of what happened at that house. Um, a lot of it we chose not to. Yeah, I mean, I, I could honestly tell you it would be the most. Um, most uh, horrific documentary we could have put out. We did have the evidence and we had things that we could have revealed that would have been beyond shocking and, uh, and terrible for what happened to the people that lived there. And we had all that, that information in the interviews, but I chose not to use it because, you know, the stuff that happened there to me was uh, something I didn't want to promote. Yeah. You know, so I didn't. I didn't want to give it that. So we just, you know, we, we did enough and we showed enough of what happened there. But I feel that anybody that watches that film will see that there was a lot more to it. Than that. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's a, a random fun question: uh, If you could eat your weight in food, what would it be? A lot of food. Um, let me think. You know what? Honestly, like I don't know. I, Back in the day, I would have said like barbecue or that kind of thing, but I kind of get sick of all that type of shit, you know? Eating a little more cleaner lately, so what would it be? Flip. If I could eat my weight in food, what would I eat? You've toured with me for how fucking long? If I could eat my weight in food, which is a lot of damn food. In the past or now? Either way, what would I eat? You would have killed every brisket in the planet. Barbecue, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd say probably, yeah, probably, probably. Okay. Is there no consequence to this hypothetical question? No, no, just a random fun question to throw in there, you know? So, now, uh, we'll go ahead and close it out with me asking you, man, like, with, you know, your road of hip-hop and paranormal research and all that stuff, what has been your greatest challenge as an artist? Well, it's very challenging to do both, that's for sure, you know what I'm saying? Because in the last 10 years, I've, I've put out nine of these documentaries. But in those nine years, I've put out several records and went on several tours, including the longest tour in hip-hop history with Tech 9 and MGK. So it's, it's fucking impossible sometimes, you know, to be able to do both of them. Um, so I think just trying to do the impossible while also having, you know, family and personal life and, and other ventures and, and dealing with this asshole. What? What? Huh? Okay. Well, yeah, well, man, thank you for your time. And definitely look forward to whatever you have coming from, coming to us this year, 2019. Sure. So, looking forward to that. So. There's only one thing I was going to say, man. Is, uh, whoever that dude is that you let in film keeps like trying to inch away with your phone. So. Uh, okay. Can I have my phone back? Fuck your phone. Bye.